Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kathy, and today we're going to be doing one subject painted two different ways using watercolor. One red apple using a dry brushing technique, and then again using wet on wet. I think this is a fun exercise that can allow us to explore different styles with watercolor and to work on our techniques and timing. If you're new, I do art process videos and essay style videos where I talk about my creative process and generally ramble too much about one thing or another. So be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get alerts on crunchy videos like this in the future. Let's get to it! For this, I'm using Stonehenge Aqua's cold pressed paper. For the paints, I'm using Winsor Newton and Daniel Smith. You can find the full list of materials I used in the description. The left apple is our dry brushed apple. So first, I'm laying down a warm wash of new gamboge over the whole sketch. It shouldn't be too thick, just enough for the yellow undertone to show through all the subsequent layers. I'm also leaving this one little square area untouched, because that's going to be the main highlight. While that's drying, I'm going to get started on the right apple, which will be our wet and wet. Again, I'm starting with a layer of new gamboge, but this time I'm loading the brush with a much more watery mixture than the red apple. You can see the sheen of the water and how the paint kind of pools in certain places. While that's still wet, I'm diving in immediately with the same brush that I now loaded up with red paint. Um, so this is a mixture of several different reds. Oddly, that typical red that pops into your head when you think of apples or fire hydrants is hard to achieve using just one red paint, except maybe cadmium red, which I have a difficult relationship with. So here I mix and matching around three different reds until I get the shade that I'm happy with. Perilyn red, Windsor red, and Pyrrhal scarlet. Once again, I'm leaving a little area on the top right for the highlight. Now while that's still wet, I'm adding a bit of sap green to the mixture, keeping it kind of secluded to the left side of the apple. And then on top of that, I add more of the red, making everything just a bit more saturated. So I'm not really doing much of pre-mixing on the palette, Instead, I'm just allowing the paints to mix directly on the paper. Because we're adding, you know, paint after paint after paint, this method prevents the whole thing from becoming too muddy and the colors completely unrecognizable. Finally, on top of all of that, I add French Ultramarine. We're almost at the finish line for this part of Wet on Wet. I'm adding the blue carefully around a highlight. I'm also avoiding touching the right side of the apple. While that is still wet, I'm going to add the shadow, starting with a very thin mixture of bluish gray and pulling down the paint from the bottom of the apple into the shadow form. This will create a softer boundary between the apple and the shadow. Now I'm going to darken the shadow further, loading it up with more of the blue, yellow, and red mixture. This whole process is nerve-wracking, but also really fun. And it's easier to practice with a contained shape like this, as opposed to like a full-blown background. And now we're going to set that to dry and work on the left apple. Comparatively, this isn't going to be as stress-inducing. We're going to layer in a mixture of the reds over the apple, painting around that square of highlight. Leave that to completely dry, and then we add a layer of sap green. Not over every part of the apple, but focusing on the stem and the leaf, and mostly the left side.
and then it's all repetition. I wait for the layer to fully dry, then apply more of the red mixture on top. Now I'm going to paint over the leaf using a mixture of the sap green and the red. I'm painting in these rough, segmented, blocky shapes, leaving lots of hard edges. Then I'm going to darken the apple further, using a mixture of the French ultramarine and the reds. And also sap green mixed with the reds for the left part. Again, we're going for hard edges. Clear, long brush strokes overlaid on top of each other. Um, I always say this, but the whole effect is kind of like translucent tape overlapping together.
two ways. Thanks so much for joining me and following along today. Take care of yourself. Take care of your box of sheep. And I'll see you in the next one.